Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. This week, I want to make some progress on this mosaic. So finish the tree and really start in on the sky. And go over my sky options and pick the one that's gonna work the best. Over on this work surface, I've got quite a bit of a mess. I need to mail these barrettes to my sister. And then I sort of have some things out for making small, so I think I'm going to make a bunch of pendants this week. So for my sky, I have pulled some of my options. And right away, this one is too light. So it's the process of elimination. This water is a very slate, cool, grayish blue. And I think that this gray is too warm. So I'm removing it. And I have this milky blue, but I think it is too blue. However, I might be able to use some of these more muted tones in here. This color, I believe, looks the best. Um, and that's this glass. So I might be using a lot of that. And I really like this touch of purple that I could mix in. The purple is a milky glass. Um, so I really like that. I have another piece of this, but look how streaky it is. So I don't think I can use this one. Let me look at the other side. Ah, the other side's even worse. So this one, limited use. That one is going to be great. Mixing in some purples and some of these muted blues, I believe. Here's my reference photo. And as you can see, I really darkened up the water quite a bit. Uh, the sky and the sea are pretty close and it makes it kind of a hazy transition between the two. So my friend and I wanted something that was a little bit more contrasty, which is why I went with the darker water. But I think I can make it so that there's a darker transition between the two. See how it is, the sky itself is actually darker, closer to the horizon and then lightens up towards the top. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my darker pieces of sky down towards the water and then lighten it up as it goes towards the top. Last week I dropped off some work and I also dropped off some pendants and it made me realize that I'm a little bit low on pendants for my Christmas markets that are coming up soon. I have to drop off in about 10 days and uh, I just picked up this gorgeous Raku at a pottery sale. This piece, this piece, and uh, this piece. So I'm excited to try these out in some pendants. I'm going to be making all kinds of pendants but this is what I want to start with. Let's see how it cuts. 
Oh, it's pretty easy to cut. So I found out that the Raku is very easy to cut, but it is also very easy to chip, and the edges tend to be sort of ragged. Fortunately, I have some mini files, and I found out that if I just take a little bit of care, I can file down the edges so that it's a little bit more smooth. <music> really excited about using this Raku for pendants, but it turns out it was just too chippy and I think it would be better if I used it in bigger pieces, especially if I have to grind the edges. So in the end, it's really just the iridized look that I am attracted to. So I ended up pulling uh, several gorgeous pieces of iridized glass and even some Van Gogh glass, some Dichro glass. And I'm just using the glass. It's much easier to work with the iridized glass than to work with this Raku. So anyway. <laughs>
that's putting it together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.